Right, in this video, we're going to talk about setting times. There's a few factors at play from when you mix the plaster and it's workable until it is no longer workable. There's a time. And I want you to understand what affects that time because people want to know, oh, when should a second coat it? At what time should I flatten it in? How much, do I, how much longer do I leave it before I give it the first trial? Well, in this video, I want you to understand why no one can give you an exact answer. And then there's going to be a second part of this video. We're going to do part two. And in part two, we're going to do touch tests so you can figure this out for yourself when each stage is ready, when it's ready for the second coat, when it's ready to be flattened in. But that'll be part two. But for this video now, I want you to understand what's at play, how this whole process works. So let's get into it. It's like going back to school, this. Right, let's talk about setting times because everybody wants to know what stage do we put the second coat on? What stage do we flatten it in? How long until we give it the second trial? Everyone wants to know these sort of answers. <clears throat> and I want you to understand so that in your mind you can grasp why no one can give you an exact answer. So, plaster goes through a couple of stages. You're gonna mix it first and it'll be wet. Then it will set and then after that, it'll dry out. Now, when you mix the plaster, you start a chemical reaction. When you mix it, you add powders to the water, a chemical reaction begins, and that plaster from that word go there starts to set. And along this process from wet to set, the plaster slowly becomes more and more unworkable because it firms up to the point where as it sets, there's nothing else you can do with it. It's completely unworkable. Once it's set, it will then start to dry out. So these aren't the same thing. The set is when the plaster changes colour. It goes from that lovely light pink colour, and then it goes that deep dark brown colour. That's when it's set. And then as it dries out, it'll come back that ivory pinkish sort of colour. And this can take anywhere from an hour on a hot summer's day with a breeze, to could be a week if you're in the dead of winter and there's no central heating in the house this can take you know nine or ten days to get from set to dry so let's draw a timeline only a rough sort of timeline it's like being back in school this isn't it imagine me as a school teacher there's the point when the plaster's wet you've just mixed it so this point is when you mix the plaster, here. You're coming down this timeline, and as we're going down this, the plaster is slowly starting to firm up until it reaches this point where it's set. Now, just before it sets, just before that chemical reaction fully takes place, we'll use a different colour. You've dropped down. Try and stay up there, please. We use a different colour. At this point, we will say the plaster is no longer workable with the orange. So you mix it, it's wet, it slowly starts to stiffen up until it gets to its set. Now, in an ideal world, if we only had to work with that, then we could give you the exact times. Because I can tell you that that roughly takes about three hours from wet to set. If you mix a bag of multi-finish or board finish in a bucket, give or take 20 minutes. It, in the same sort of temperature, you could consistently work out how long it's going to take to set. Let's just say, for argument's sake, it's roughly going to be about three hours. And then it's going to dry out. And it'll be bone dry, ready for painting. And this could be a day or five days, whatever. Now... 
in this pro this point here from wet to set to that point where it's no longer workable this is where the magic happens for you as a plasterer this is the bit where you're going to do your first coat your second coat you flatten it in your first trial your second trial and your polish there's loads of different ways of doing this that's just this is how i plaster if you use a, a, a speed skim or you've got your fancy plastic trowels or whatever you want to do we're just going to stick with this for now just for argument's sake um first coat second coat flatten it in first trial second trial and a polish the job's finished the walls are nice now we could say for argument's sake these aren't exact times because they are slightly different but just to make it easy to understand let's just say that each point takes 30 minutes that's a polish there 30 minutes for each part of the process and that'll bring us to exactly three hours so when the plastic is no longer workable if that was the case and that's all we have to deal with then we could literally tell everybody you put your second coat on at 27 minutes past you put your first trial on you do this then you and you could work it all out spot on but unfortunately this is the reason that we can't do that we have variables that we can't really control completely first variable lads on the building sites have to deal with this wind not out your ass wind blowing through the dwelling that you're working in if you're working in a apartment blocks and the front doors haven't been fitted the wind is not fitted or whatever and you've got a breeze blowing through wind will affect the drying time all this will come together soon that's one variable that you've got to deal with another variable temperature it'll dry out faster it will dry faster in the summer than what it will in the winter now notice i'm talking about drying not setting the setting the chemical reaction will stay roughly the same and that's why I highlighted that these are different. Your set time always sort of stays around about that three hour mark. Give or take a bit. It does go a little bit faster when these variables go into play, but not a lot. Third variable, suction. That is the main one that causes the main problems for most beginners, suction. All these three things affect how fast the plaster dries out. If these are all in full force, you can say your plaster is going to be bone dry and you'll be able to paint it a lot sooner than if all these things are under control. Now, let's show you how this works. Let's do another timeline. I won't bother copying all this exactly, but you know what it all is. Your first coat, your second coat, you're flattening in. For all your bits, up until... The plaster sets at this point here, yeah? set there. Sorry about the handwriting. And we've got dry here, wet, when it's just been mixed. Now, your process is in here. Two, three, four. You've got your first coat, second coat, flattening in, first trial, second trial, and your polish. Great. And the point, important bar where the plastic is no longer workable. Now, how these things affect. If it's windy and it's a hot day and you've got a bit of suction, this drying time is reduced where that would normally be about three days. We could say that this is only going to be one day put it to there now what happens is when this drying time is dramatically reduced the workability of the plaster is also reduced and that might come down to about here giving you maybe two hours rather than three hours which means that from this point 
to this point, the plast is no longer workable. It's slowly getting stiffer and stiffer until this point. You've got to fit all your process in. That can't be there. You've got to get all this done here faster. So rather than being 30 minutes for each segment, you've now only got, I don't know, 15 minutes for each part. So you've got to go out the clappers or you can't do as much plastering because you haven't got enough time before this part where the plastic is no longer workable is upon you. Now, you can, to an extent, control these. Where's my board rubber? The wind, if you're on a job and you can close the windows and the doors, you can basically eliminate that, the wind. Think of when your mum put the washing on the line or your missus and your clothes dried out real fast because it was windy. Well, we've got rid of that. So the wind isn't taking the moisture out of our plaster anymore, drying it. So we haven't got to worry about that. Temperature, there's not really a lot we can do with the temperature. You've got to sort of make sure that the heating is turned off in the house that you work in. You don't want to be working in a room with the radiator in the room on full belt because that will really affect how workable the plaster is. The time it takes to dry out and the time it takes before it's no longer workable will be dramatically affected if the radiator is pumping out heat. So try and get on to turn the radiator off. You can control that. This is the one that causes the big problems for everyone. The suction. If you miss a large section of a wall that's a high suction background and you don't put your sealer on it, if you miss out your sealer on a big part, you forget to do under the window or something with your PVA glue or your SPR, then what will happen is your drying out time will come in here before it's set. You can dry the plaster out before it's had a chance to set and it's knackered, it falls off. That's what happens if you don't use sealer on a high suction background. Your plaster will curl up like, like little quavers on the wall and just drop off. So you don't want that. That's This is something that beginners always struggle with. Now, if you want to completely eliminate that and give yourself as much time as possible, then use SBR. Put SBR on the day before, and that will kill suction completely. You can sort of stick to a general sort of rule of thumb then. All your mixes will all set around about the same sort of speed and you can sort of get used to the setting times yourself. And the reason that I'm saying SBR, not PVA glue, is because PVA glue re-emulsifies when it's wet. It's a clever word that, wasn't it? Re-emulsifies. Goes back tacky again. So your PVA, or if you wanted to be a smart arse, your polyvinyl acetate, will go back tacky and let the background suck through and dry your plaster out fast, which then reduces your workability time. SBR completely seals it. It doesn't let it do that. So your SBR will stop the suction and let the plaster set naturally. So you're going to get your full three hours of workability or thereabouts. It's not exactly three hours. I'm just trying to give you an idea of how this whole process works. Your suction can be brought under control with SBR. Your wind can be brought under control with closing your windows and doors. And your temperature can be, to a degree, brought under control. In the summer, your gauges of plaster are going to be faster than what they are in the winter. In the winter, this can be up to four hours sometimes. If you're working in damp environments, because it's all about how fast the water is dried out. If you're in damp environments and it's cold, there's nothing drawing the moisture out of the plastic. It's not drying it out quicker. So it'll stay workable for a lot longer. Sometimes it can even be workable. It's still sort of wet as it's setting, which is an absolute nightmare. You don't want that when it's when there's everything's too far the other the other end of the extreme, you know. But I just wanted you to understand what's at play, what is affecting the setting times, because people want to know. 
how long for each thing, but it all depends on these variables and how well you are at controlling them. So now that you understand that, now you can see why I can't give you an exact time for each part of the process, because it's always slightly different, because I don't know how warm it's going to be tomorrow. I don't know how high of a suction background you're going over and if there's going to be a draft blown through the house. So they're the variables with the drying out. Now, if you do the things that I've said, you can sort of bring all those under some degree of control and you've just got your chemical reaction time that you've got to deal with. Your three hours. Now this can be messed around with as well. There's things that are variable for that. For instance, if you mix up with dirty water, this chemical reaction here will be reduced. Meaning that you, you've got to sort of squeeze all these things in sooner because you've mixed with dirty water, it sets faster. You can put accelerator in the plaster, which brings on the chemical reaction, which brings that sooner as well. I would say, forget this for now, Never mix with dirty water. Always wash your tools off. Always wash your buckets out before you mix your second coat up. Keep everything sort of consistent so you can get used to how the plaster feels. Don't mix with dirty water and forget about accelerators. Just get used to this process first and getting the feel for it. Because the second part of this, I'm going to do another video. Second part is knowing when to do each part of this process because you can't do it by time in it as we've just discovered but knowing when to do each part you can do a touch test you can feel the wall and know when it's ready for the second coat you can feel it and know when it's ready to be flattened in you just sort of get a feel for it and after a while you don't need to feel it you just sort of know the timings yourself you, you know you can just sort of sense it's i need to get on this it's it's going in so we'll deal with all that in another video touch tests I'll call it part two and I'll try and link the two videos together when I get a bit more clever with YouTube. But anyway, I hope that clears it up. I hope you're starting to understand a little bit about why no one can give you the exact timings of things and how being wet and set and dry, the different stages and how the variables affect and change the timing of everything. Cheers. I just want to make sure I've covered that point properly for you. Just to make sure these three variables, wind, temperature and suction, reduce the drying time. And when the drying time is reduced, it doesn't affect the setting time so much, the chemical reaction on the plaster, but it affects the workability. The workability of the plaster is also reduced with the drying time, which means that your whole process that you have to go through to achieve a nice finish has to be squeezed in a shorter time so as the drying time reduces so does the plaster's workability right i hope that clears it all up for you and makes sense i've tried to explain it in such a way that it logically sort of is coherent to some extent if you've got any questions just leave them in the comments and i'll do my best to answer them I don't know if I can really expand much more on what I've just explained to you. So hopefully it makes sense. There's going to be a part two to this video so that you know when each stage is ready by touching the wall. And like I said, I'm going to try and link the two videos together. Um, I'm sure I'll be able to do that. But in the meantime, guys, as always, if you like this video, give me a little thumbs up. If you think this could help someone else, why don't you give it a share? But whatever you choose to do, thanks for watching.